Greetings from the Philippines to the world. It's August 25, 5 p.m. here in Manila. And we are on Facebook Live on Eagle News. And also watch this video on eaglenewslive.com. I am Cesar Vallejos. We are open for business. Join me. Discover the latest news and information in business around the world. Stay ahead of the curve from vision to action. The peso is 53.43 against the dollar and at the closing of trade yesterday, the Philippine Stock Exchange Index closed at 7,766.47, down 37.56 points or 0.48%. In a research reported by a flexible workspace provider in 2016, 35% of Filipino employees noted that the trip to the office is a waste of time due to traffic congestion. There are about 10 million Filipinos who commute in Metro Manila, wasting three hours a day in traffic. Also in Metro Manila alone, the worsening traffic costs 3.5 billion pesos in lost opportunities per day, according to the Japan International Cooperation Agency. While some quarters say that it is the years of underinvestment, the lack of political will, and the increasing number of vehicles on the road that causes that cause the traffic problem and the discomfort of Filipino workers. Some believe that there is also caused by our obsolete urban mo models. How is urban planning, or the lack of it, is affecting the Filipino workforce and business? Joining us later is considered a pillar of the industry whose architectural firm is the first Filipino company included in the top 500 architectural firms in the world of the London-based World Architecture magazine in 1999 and the only Southeast Asian architectural firm in the top 100 largest practices and the top eight leisure projects in the world in 2012. Before we talk with the president of the Palafox Architecture Group architect, Philip Felino June Palafox Jr., let's take a look at these business stories we've seen published this week. Selection of third telco to push through by the fourth quarter, poorest Consumers lost as much as 14 pesos per day due to inflation. Boracay companies start hiring employees for October 26 reopening and Makati mass transport system to break ground by year end. Here are the details. A new contender to the PLDT and Globe Telecom duopoly will be named within the fourth quarter of 2018, the Department of Information and Communications Technology said on Thursday. The ICT Acting Secretary Eliseo Rio Jr. said that he was not inclined to grant more time to interested bidders as President Rodrigo Duterte had originally insisted on having a new major telco player by March 2018. Rio said that local companies that have expressed interest include Converge ICT Solutions, Easy Call Communications Philippines, Now Corporation, Philippine Telegraph and Telephone Company PTNT, Tier 1, and Trans-Pacific Broadband Group. He said foreign telcos that expressed their interest were China Telecom, South Korean companies KT Corporation and LG U Plus, Norway's Telenor, and the United States based ATT. Rio added that Japanese and Vietnamese telcos also expressed interest. The third player will also be barred from merging with a dominant player or any company with a market share of at least 40%. The poorest com consumers lost as much as 14 pesos per day in the January to June period due to the high cost of various commodities, particularly food items, according to Ebon Foundation. Ebon Foundation Executive Director Jose Enrique Africa said 50% of the poorest households already lost 1,159 to 2,596 in the first six months of the year due to inflation. Business Mirror estimates showed that this translates to a daily income loss of 6.44 to 14.42 pesos per household. However, the estimates only accounted for the net effect of inflation on household incomes and did not isolate the impact of the weak peso, high oil prices, and the train law. The poorest 30% of households are very sensitive to food price hikes since food accounts for about 70% of their consumer basket. 
The Senate Committee on Economic Affairs prodded the Duterte administration to promptly form a multi-agency task force to deal, uh, to deal with and quickly mitigate the impact of the skyrocketing inflation. Hotels and establishments in the resort island of Boracay have started accepting applications for staff in time for the reopening of the island on October 26, the Provincial Employment Service Office said. Vivian Ruiz Solano, head of the Peso Aklan, said a job fair for hundreds of available posts for Boracay businesses was held on August 7. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources announced the opening of Boracay on October 26, six months after this resort island was closed to rehabilitate its environment. Other companies have also announced the availability of hundreds of positions for qualified employees from all over the country. Rowan Aguirre, executive assistant of the local government of Malay, said there are still 500 companies in this resort Sort Island who are yet to comply with the necessary requirements of the reopening. Among the requirements are business permits, fire and sanitation clearances, among others. The $3.7 billion unsolicited proposal to build a Makati mass transport system is seen to break ground by the end of the year, the Makati city government said. In a statement on Thursday, the local government said the Swiss challenge for the subway proposal of IRC properties is set to end by September 24, hence the positive outlook that construction may begin by year's end. Makati Mayor Abibina yesterday said the proposed intra-city subway in the country's premier financial district could break ground by year-end once the competitive Swiss challenge process for the $3.7 billion railway project is completed next month. It's going to be an interesting conversation as architect Jun Palafox joins us when this open for business returns. Keep watching. Today is the principal architect and urban planner, architect Palafox. Thank you for coming to the show, sir. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Yeah. Thank you. Glad to be here. Sir, uh, our topic is very uh, timely <laughs> because of the uh, traffic congestion and all the um, uh, recent happenings, in especially at the airport in the last few days. So. Uh, what exactly, sir, is the impact of uh, urban planning to the Filipino workforce? But before maybe you answer that, can you give us an insight of your definition of urban planning? Yeah, urban planning is um, preparing the land use and mm -hmm. the circulation routes on the land, on the mm -hmm. cities and the towns and so on, where it's a platform where architecture and engineering comes in. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, it's land use like uh, housing, transportation, mm -hmm. industries, mixed use development, place of jobs, place of housing, place of schools, and so on. Putting together what comprises a city or a town or mm -hmm. a province. So it's really, uh, architect, it's really a consolidation of various factors. It's not just, you know, one specific aspect of a certain place, yeah. but it is... Uh, uh, a consolidation of a lot of yeah. things. It's putting in a space, uh, uh, everything like it was architecture, engineering, management, mm -hmm. economics, political aspects in a space, in uh, a space like land, land, mm -hmm. land. Yeah, 
and it's comprehensive in terms of area, the whole area, comprehensive in terms of time, mm -hmm. like immediate action, short term, medium term, long term, and visionary planning. And and it's really planned that way. And unfortunately, our country, mm -hmm. we don't have good urban planning or the good plans are not being implemented. Mm -hmm. and, and impact on employees and workers is a very, very relevant topic today. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think because of the how much time is wasted every day just going to work. So, so sir, when you say uh, good plans are not implemented, in uh, when we look at uh, how the government and private sector deal with each other, when we talk of urban planning, whose call is it? Yeah, it's it's both. Okay. Um, governments uh, regulate and stimulate development, mm -hmm. and the private sector invests. Okay. But I think eighty percent of all uh, of most countries and cities, eighty percent is private sector investment. Okay. Twenty percent just for government. But ba basically, the government is the infrastructure, and and that's needed for a city. But also, private sector can do the infrastructure, and we have we have used the wrong urban models. Mm -hmm. And 1976, that's 42 years ago, I was team leader for the World Bank funded Metro Manila Transport Land Use Development Planning Project. Mm -hmm. And it was in that project that it was one of the best metro plans in the world. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's one reason why I was invited to help plan Dubai mm -hmm. in 1976. Because of that met metro plan, I was senior planner and team leader. And we said that time, with a do nothing scenario on land use and transportation, we will have catastrophic traffic, flooding, lack of decent housing, not prepared to disasters. And it's happening today. Mm -hmm. the catastrophic traffic, flooding, <laughs> not prepared to disasters. Mm -hmm. We told that in 1976, with a do nothing scenario. Uh, okay, let me go back to that. Uh, time, sir. You said that you participated in a World Bank project. World Bank funded. World Metro Bank Plan funded. Uh, Metro Plan Manila. Metro Plan Manila. And that was done how many years ago? 1976. Sir? 1976. So, as early as 1976, there was really a, a Metro yeah, Manila plan. Very comprehensive. It involved 40 towns and cities, not wow. just the 17 towns and cities. Mm -hmm. And we were, I think we were about 80 in that project and about 20 international experts were with us and mm -hmm. I, I was team leader. What happened to like that project? Some components of that plan. We were the first ones to propose the light rail transit. And by okay. 1992, we should have completed mm -hmm. eight lines. We only have three mm -hmm. lines. We cannot even maintain the MRT. That time, we're talking already about congestion charging. Mm -hmm. We cannot even implement the driver plus one driver uh, cars. Mm -hmm. right. At that time, it told already, but when you enter a congested area, you mm -hmm. must pay to enter. Okay. And places like even Dubai, which we helped plan, they're already implementing the congestion charging. Mm -hmm. And so many things, like we're still using the outdated uh, practices of intramuros during mm -hmm. the Spanish times. Intramuros, inside the walls for the rich, and powerful and connected, extra mm -hmm. murus outside the walls for the Indians, the peasants, the sunglass, and the poor. Mm -hmm. If you look at Metro Mina, we're still practicing the intra murus and extra murus. <laughs> That's when one reason also for the, the employees suffering, mm -hmm. because let's say the central business district of Makati, mm -hmm. the daytime population is 11 times the nighttime population. All right. Because the employees of Makati are not included in the housing stock of Makati. Mm -hmm. So I think most of them spend about, waste about five hours a day in traffic. Mm -hmm. So five hours a day times maybe 220 working days, that's what? Uh, more than 1,200 hours a year is wasted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have 40 years in your economic life, you would have wasted <laughs> more than 40,000 man hours in your life. Ideally, there should be balance between place of work and place of residence. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, where our central business districts are Makati, Fort Bonifacio, or Tega Center, surrounded by low-density gated communities. Mm -hmm. Communities for the rich, but no communities for the, even for the middle-income uh, executives and employees. So, so much because of, there were plans or there are poor models, mm -hmm. like 
Singapore, Hong Kong, our Asian neighbor, neighboring cities, their model was European cities. Our model for Philippine planning is Los Angeles. Los Angeles Which is yeah. Los Angeles was uh, post-war Los Angeles was designed for the automobile, not for the pedestrian, okay. not for the public transit. Have we been inspired by other American cities? Maybe it should have been Boston, Chicago, New York, Portland, mm -hmm. not Los Angeles. Los Angeles planning after the war is the worst kind of planning. It's urban sprawl, mm -hmm. sprawling city. And there's a big imbalance between the place of work and place of res residence. Mm -hmm. Because it was designed for the automobile. And at that point in time, energy, cost of fuel was very cheap and cars mm -hmm. were more affordable. Mm -hmm. But Los Angeles have reformed, but we are not yet reforming. Like Los mm -hmm. Angeles, the gated communities of Los Angeles, after the OPEC oil crisis of 1973, they opened up their gates. Mm -hmm. Here, the gates of the gated communities are not yet still open. closed. <laughs> still closed. That was, so we are, what, 1973, 45 years behind the wow. reforms of uh, progressive cities in the world. Architect, you mentioned about um, various cities like Chicago, Boston, or also other countries also in like the US. Singapore and Singapore, uh, Hong, Kong, Hong Kong, and of course London, Paris, Dubai. New York, and and, and that's my question, sir. Why are sitting are some cities getting it right in terms of urban like, planning? What's wrong like, with with after, the after Philippines? After my stint as team leader for development planning of Metro Plan Manila, 1976, mm -hmm. 1977, I was invited as urban planner and architect in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've helped 38 other countries. They listen wow. more to us than our own country. And and. But when we know, we Filipinos, we know the problems, we mm -hmm. know the solutions. But some decision makers, they still wait for foreign experts to tell us what's wrong. We already know. I think that's a reverse, it's a mm -hmm. reverse uh, discrimination. Okay. If you are Filipino, uh, you are not treated as an expert. So uh, is it reverse. some? So in short, it, is it something about our culture, oh, yeah, or is it something the, about uh, colonial baggage? I think mm -hmm. that's one. And the, and the other one, some decision makers they don't want to be told what they do not know. They do not know. They do not know. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere in the world, we are we are being hired to tell the decision makers what they do not know. They do not know. They do not know. If our knowledge is like a pie, okay. a small person. A slice of that pie is what we know we know. Mm -hmm. Another another small slice is what we know we do not know. The rest of the pie is what we do not know we do not know we do not know. And that's the problem here. If you tell people what they do not know, they do not know, they do not know, they feel insulted. Mm -hmm. As in the world, experts, so all the experts are mm -hmm. hard. Yes. Pay it's very all well Correct. to tell them what they do not know, they do not know, they do not know. And they embrace it. They embrace and it. And they do yeah. something about So, sir, they when you, you... So many Filipinos are, uh, especially some decision makers, they, they, they seem to know more than, than what experts can, can share. Mm -hmm. And, sir, I understand I that in uh, Dubai there's a lot that. of... Uh, I, uh, there's a lot of Filipino architects there also. Yeah. So, and also yeah. when we um, uh, visited Dubai, you can really see yeah. and feel yeah. how progressive their urban design is. Uh, urban design is. Can you talk more about yeah. your work with In the fact, Dubai? I, city? I was the first Southeast Asian and Filipino architect invited to work in Dubai. Mm -hmm. I was invited in 1976. I okay. went to work 1977. How long did you work there? Four years for the Dubai government. Okay. And that time I work on uh, influencing the architecture, okay. like architectural character of buildings, and then coordination of utilities, mm -hmm. the different utilities and services like mm -hmm. power, water, and so on. Mm -hmm. Also transportation and traffic management, mm -hmm. land use, and, and plans. I was one of, of architects, planners, engineers from so many countries, maybe more than 20 countries that time. Mm -hmm. And I was name hired. I did not apply for the job. I was invited. 
Wow. I need not even where Dubai was. Yeah. It was because of your work with the uh, metro, metro plan. plan. Primary. So the metro plan is really very ideal because it, the fact that you were yeah. uh, invited to go there, you want they wanted to somehow replicate that yeah. uh, success. So that several plan. or some several countries we brought into Dubai what we know, what we learned from previous experience. Mm -hmm. And metro plan was comparable to the metro plan for New York, metro plan for Toronto. Metro really? plan for London, mm -hmm. Singapore, mm -hmm. Kuala Lumpur, and so mm -hmm. on. That's the comparison in Hong Kong. Wow. So when we, uh, going back to the, 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 the work that you did with uh, Dubai Architect, uh, when doing an urban planning, what exactly is, uh, like say, of course, your client would be the government yeah. and uh, the private yeah. investment. So um, uh, are you part of that team that will somehow... Um, you know, check the character of that specific country yeah. or that locality. Yeah. How do how do one, you do it? One thing with Dubai, they have great rulers. Okay. So His Highness Sheikh Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum. He was the ruler at that time, the father of the ruler now, Sheikh Mohammed. Okay. He wanted Dubai to lead, not to be led. Wow. And then he wanted us to design Dubai as if there's no oil, okay. because in 35 years oil would be gone. He wanted us to create a garden city out of the desert. Mm -hmm. He wanted us to make Dubai the Theater, leading city in the Middle East and North Africa in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I like very much, we were given the opportunity, me and the whole family, to go around the world for every month of service, to learn from the best cities in the world and mm -hmm. bring it back to the conversation in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And they have a strong political will, mm -hmm. visionary leadership, mm -hmm. good appreciation of planning like urban planning, good appreciation of design like architecture and engineering mm -hmm. and good governance so in short sir are we saying that all the all those factors that you mentioned from uh, political will from good <coughs> governance is uh, not done in the Philippines at least from the time that you did in 1976 the metro yeah. plan. plan metro plan yeah uh, I think we have now we have a strong leadership yes and uh, and I hope Urban planning will be better appreciated also. But sir, what's your comment on some uh, quarters saying that in terms of urban planning, Metro Manila already is a dead city? Uh, uh, what's it, your reaction? It's dying. Okay, it's dying. <laughs> because one, they did not follow our plan, Metro Plan uh, Manila. And the number two is uh, obsolete practices, okay. like the intramuros, extramuros. You have urban sprawl in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. Suburban, urban sprawl. There's a Planning is balanced. Mm -hmm. There's so much imbalance. Mm -hmm. If you compare uh, a city to a human body, okay. the lungs of the cities are the parts and open spaces. Okay. The parts and open spaces now are being converted and built on and sold, just like <laughs> selling your land. Okay. And then the hearts of the city are the major activity centers, the central business districts, school district, big shopping malls, and so on. Those are the heart of the city. And the, the arteries of the city are the, the w uh, roads and waterways. So Metro Malaya needs a heart transplant, a heart bypass, <laughs> and a lung transfer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but uh, given that, sir, is, mm -hmm. there, is there a chance? Is there still a, a, a window for improvement yeah, on that? Can, 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 like say, as you mentioned, it's patterned from the intramuros where it is, it's really a closed yeah. uh, community. Can uh, the private and the sector car -oriented. and the car oriented it, can they or is there a chance for them to uh, uh, open uh, their gates and uh, will the government and the private sector or the this uh, yeah. communities living in Makati can they be involved in the yeah. urban planning? They, they they should be like there are private sector like Rockwell Drive we master plan yes. Rockwell and designed the first five towers. Rockwell oh. Drive is open to the public. Yeah. It closes only from midnight till 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And Orbit Street in Bel Air, it's oh, open. Oh. Yes. I think from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. So other, other villages can follow the same as good patriotic citizens. Mm -hmm. Because EDSA is functioning like nine roads. It's a mm -hmm. major artery, minor artery, major collector road, minor collector road, it's residential access road, uh, shopping center access road, military camps road, <laughs> schools road, and so on. 
So there should be eight parallel roads to EDSA. And where are these eight parallel roads? Inside military camps, inside the gated communities, and inside cemeteries. <laughs> so we should open them up at least during peak hours. It will, it will alleviate the traffic situation. Like mm -hmm. Makati CBD, Central mm -hmm. Business District. The density increased by four times since 1990. Mm -hmm. But the capacity of the roads and access on public transport did not increase four times. Yes. I did. think also Ortega Center and Fort Bonifacio and I think even even Cubao, Araneta Center, mm -hmm. they increased more than four times, even at the corridor. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and cars increasing so much, mm -hmm. but we don't have the increase in roads and public transit and so on. Mm -hmm. And then num there are 20 kinds of urban transport. Number one is walking. Yeah. Okay. Number two is bicycle. Number three, four, five, six, seven, and so on is public transit. The automobile should be their last, last, last choice. The automobile. Mm -hmm. In Japan, they have one of the highest car ownership in the world, but 82% use public transit. Yes. They only bring out their cars 1 o'clock in the morning when there are no more trains running or during the weekends. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they have a very, very efficient public yeah. uh, transport Even system. Even in Germany, they make the best cars in the world, but they don't allow their cars mm -hmm. in the city centers. Uh, but mm -hmm. what about, sir, your view of uh, some uh, developers now who um, try to uh, somehow apply urban planning in the sense that, as you mentioned earlier, the lungs, the heart, and uh, the other yeah. system are uh, designed yeah. in a way that it um, uh, completes the whole picture and providing the um, uh, w Filipino workforce and the residents yeah. a good, you know, better quality of living. But before you answer, sir, we'll pause uh, for a break. Uh, open for business returns in a while. Keep watching. We're back on Open for Business. Uh, with me is architect Jun Palafox of the Palaso Palafox Group uh, architecture firm. And uh, we were telling earlier, architect, uh, I was asking earlier, what's, the, uh, what's your comment on the developers now who are trying to implement urban planning concepts? Yeah, um, I give five guidelines. It must mm -hmm. be people first, okay. then planet Earth, the environment. Then we can talk about prosperity or profits. Then, as much practicable, cultural history and heritage, mm -hmm. and interfaith spirituality. What's happening if there's no government guiding? Mm -mm. Private sector is profit-oriented. Okay. Some are just profit, 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 never mind traffic. <laughs> yes. That's what's happening because government is not regulating it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe people in government are not aware of such thing. Mm -hmm. That's why at Palafox, we, these are our guidelines. So if we, there's a project that destroys the environment, we don't accept the project. Okay. For instance, if we create too much traffic, we tell our clients also, we must address also the traffic generation and so on. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you don't regulate the private sector, they will go for profits, 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 mm -hmm. profits. But if there's a, other countries in the world, other more, more progressive cities, they have good urban planners in government. Okay and with the latest trends, global trends. Uh, the, the planning we're practicing in the Philippines is uh, obsolete. Mm -hmm. It's still car-oriented. Mm -hmm. Even look at our infrastructure. It's for mm -hmm. the cars, not for the pedestrians, mm -hmm. not for public transit. Mm -hmm. It's for the cars, and only 2% of Filipinos are car owners. 100% mm -hmm. of us Filipinos are pedestrians. Yes. Once you leave your car, you're a pedestrian. But look at our <laughs> infrastructure. It's prioritized the automobile. Yes. Elsewhere in the world, it's the pedestrian, the bicycle, and public transit. Mm -hmm. But here, it's still the post-war planning when cost of fuel was very cheap mm -hmm. and car was the, the, the preferred mode of transport. We cannot mm -hmm. afford that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, now, sir, that you mentioned about this infrastructure, 
Uh, do you think with the build, build, build uh, campaign program of the uh, Duterte administration, do you th what is the role of urban planning there? Have you, I know, have you, you know, somehow informed the government yeah. or the private sector that there ha in this yeah. build, build, build campaign something an yeah. urban planning um, methodologies and conce concepts should for, be incorporated? Yeah, fortunately, we we have done the urban planning for the whole province of Pampanga. Okay, Clark. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now doing Metro Davao Urban Master Plan, eight okay. LGUs, and we're putting there the best practices in the world. So it's public transport first, and then, and then create new cities. We need 100 new cities in our country by 2050, mm -hmm. because our population today is 106 million. Mm -hmm. By 2050, we will be 166 million. Mm -hmm. So with 50 million more Filipinos, 70 percent of them will want to live in cities. Mm -hmm. We need at least 100 new cities. Otherwise. Even our provincial cities will become as bad, if not worse, than Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. So in the Metro Daba Urban Master Plan, we are encouraging new towns, new cities outside the existing cities, mm -hmm. outside. Like Metro Davao, eight LGUs, we can fit in six Singapores or four Hong Kongs. Wow. And the province of Pampanga, we can fit three Singapores or two Hong Kongs. So wow. if they follow our master plan, we can preserve the open spaces, park, and so on. And yet, uh, we so, can so, make uh, it more yeah. livable. Yeah, sorry, sir. Okay. So you're saying that you have, um, you are now designing the urban plan for eight LGUs. In, uh, in Metro Davao. In Metro Davao. Pampanga, okay. we just completed it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you, sir, describe how... Uh, you know the ideal urban plan for one LGU that should be replicated, possibly replicated by the other LGU. Let's say the okay. The you create new cities outside the built up area. Okay. Let's say the big shopping malls. Maybe don't let them already in the congested uh, cities. Okay. Encourage them to build outside and create new new developments outside, and then. We propose circumferential road transport corridors mm -hmm. to go around the built-up mm -hmm. areas okay. and radial roads to interconnect also. And these 100 new cities we need by 2050, they should be start to be planned and developed. And it it's also would help Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. Because Metro Manila, why do people come to Metro Manila? Because the opportunities of jobs and, yes. and education and so mm -hmm. on. We should make the provincial towns and cities more attractive than Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. And you would even be helping Metro Manila by creating better cities outside of Metro Manila. The mm -hmm. whole country, we should be doing that. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, some of the questions would be continuity. Like for example, uh, you uh, created a very, very ideal plan. Mm -hmm. But uh, if there is a new administration you know, that comes in, it is um, possible that they will not uh, really respect or appreciate that kind of urban plan. So what is your suggestion or what's the solution to ensure that the whatever urban plan that has been approved and developed will come into fruition? The private sector must be involved. Like uh, there are chambers of commerce, mm -hmm. there are Rotary Club, there are Lions Club and maybe create a development foundation mm -hmm. for the city. So whoever will be, will be mayor or governor in the future, this private sector participated or led foundation will make sure they follow the plan. Like mm -mm. Daniel Burnham planned Manila in 1905, Baguio and Chicago in 1909. Mm -hmm. Both Manila and Baguio did not follow the city beautiful and city efficient principles of urban planning by Daniel Burnham. But Chicago, mm -hmm. they followed it. Mm -hmm. And he said the inspiration for Manila should be like Paris and Venice. Paris mm -hmm. because of wide boulevards, River Seine and Pasig River. Mm -hmm. Venice because of the steros of Manila and the canals of Venice. Manila Bay would be like Bay of Naples, the waterfront. Mm -hmm. And all of these principles, 1909, four years after he planned Manila, he planned Chicago. Mm -hmm. Chicago followed the city beautiful, city of recent mm -hmm. principles. Although they keep updating every year because of new changes, but the basic principles of city beautiful and putting order in the city is still being followed. Mm -hmm. What about, sir, the character of a nation or a city? Like, for example, you know, uh, they can, you, you can say that 
you know it 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 is patterned after Paris or Venice, but it's but, uh, uh, inspiration. It you don't have to copy. Yes, it's a, yes. The, just the principles, not the not the look. Of exactly, it. but uh, which is my question? How? Uh, what are your strategies to ensure that the character is reflected in the look? of a yeah. specific city like in your you, urban plan. Like you can say Dubai, for instance, they mm -hmm. wanted uh, uh, international and Arabic and Islamic at the same time. Yes. So it's a blend. I think Malaysia is the same also. For government buildings, it must follow the, the Malay Islamic architecture, mm -hmm. at least in government buildings. And and private sector is very hard to control the character, style and character. But government sector, at least the civic structures, the infrastructure. For instance, in all our plans, we always require that road transport corridors, one third should be for trees and landscaping. Okay. One third for pedestrians and bicycles, mm -hmm. and one third for the moving traffic lanes. Mm -hmm. Because it takes at least ten trees to recover the oxygen out of the carbon monoxide per car. Mm -hmm. And it lowers by at least five degrees the temperature. Mm -hmm. So you would encourage walking. Mm -hmm. And we plan healthy places for healthy people. We must walk at least 10,000 steps a day. <laughs> That's seven <laughs> kilometers a day. When mm -hmm. I, yes, two weeks ago, I was in Boston in New York. I was walking 20,000 steps a day. Wow. That's 14 kilometers. Oh, that's double the... Although the, the, it's very hot summer days also. Very uh -huh. hot summer. Uh, temperatures just like here. But I was able to walk without noticing it because the pedestrian pathways, the sidewalks, the public transportation are safe and convenient. So mm -hmm. we, should, we should... And sometimes it's very artsy. Yeah. You know, the landscaping is very yeah. beautiful. And they show their gardens. Here there are beautiful gardens in the gated mm -hmm. communities and they, they put a wall. <laughs> Elsewhere in the world, when you have beautiful garden, you share it with the okay. public. Correct. Which leads me again, sir, to the impact of the Filipino workforce of course uh, okay yeah. we have a very you have a very concept a go, very good concept that uh, since it is not practiced here in the Philippines uh, especially uh, because of the traffic conge uh, congestion a lot of them are affected and also you know they cannot live near their uh, place, works, of work. place of work yeah so they have to commute yeah. very uh, you know very far you know for them yeah. to reach work so what are the what are the possible ideas that you think yeah. should be done for the Philippine Maybe we workforce? can borrow the anti-snub zoning, inclusionary zoning. What is that anti-snub, sir? in Massachusetts. Okay. In Massachusetts, 20% of what you plan, plant communities or anything, 20% must be affordable. Mm -hmm. And even the Catholic Archdiocese of Boston, 30% mm -hmm. must mm -hmm. be affordable. Mm -hmm. And the uh, 80 to 70 to 80 percent open market it cross subsidizes the profits you make you cross subsidize the affordable housing mm -hmm. let's say if we had to do again Fort Bonifacio okay maybe 20 to 30 percent should have been devoted to the affordable okay. including the lower middle and, and, and urban poor areas and we have so much government land maybe in the future uh, Government lands being converted into urban development. They should allocate twenty to thirty percent for the urban poor and mm -hmm. the lower middle income. So Which is not the design today. Not today. We don't have such a no, no, nothing we for the poor. We so don't have anti-snub zoning. Okay. There's this what they call socialized housing. But let's say you build in Magadi, you can put it in Batanes or Holo. <laughs> your twenty percent in in right. New York, in Boston, and most European cities, it must be within. Within is when we designed Rockwell, a survey was done. Mm -hmm. We, Metro Manila, we walk only 400 meters mm -hmm. because there are no sidewalks. Yes. Or we st stop anywhere tricycle, stop mm -hmm. anywhere jeepney, stop anywhere buses, stop anywhere taxi, stop anywhere cars. Mm -hmm. So we walk only 400 meters and there are no safe and convenient side sidewalks. Mm -hmm. mm. So, sir. Uh, what is your view of uh, some developers who are trying to come up with a lot of uh, spaces now, like, say, dormitories for the call centers or um, um, 
uh, apartments or units uh, for families uh, that are easily accessible to their workspace. They come up with uh, high-rise buildings just within the community. So is that the right thing to do? It's a good initiative. Okay. It's a good initiative. Like if we were to redevelop Makati or the Artigas area or mm -hmm. even Fort Bonifacio or even Cubao, mm -hmm. they should put more affordable housing. There's too much concentration of jobs, but no affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Like people working in Makati, living in Quezon City, I think they waste five, five, five yes. hours a day. Correct, correct. So, mm -hmm. it's, it, and uh, on, on peak hours, sir, it's even more. You know, and I, if there if there is uh, like say for example there is a stalled car or an accident in one space the whole stretch is um, heavily affected. So, uh, sir, going the, the way I understand now with your um, um, insights is that there has to be a good um, uh, coordination between government and the private sector. And good urban planning. In, and good urban planning. So, who should be the architects of an urban uh, of yeah. the urban plan? Because I understand you said there has to be, you know, a good uh, coordination between uh, private sector and in government. government. Who is the let's say the uh, the czar or the the master yeah. of the urban plan? The 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 end uh, as a follow up question, sir. Does this need, uh, you think, a special department? Like, for example, there's a problem of water now. They say, oh, we should have a department of, uh, of water management. So, with urban planning, do you think that there has to be a special yeah. um, sector or organization that oversees yeah. this? There are, like Singapore, they have the uh, Housing and Urban Development Authority Okay. in Singapore. And we used to have the... Department or Ministry of Human Settlements. It was abolished. Yes. And there was the infrastructure planning of the planning. And that was the time of uh, President Marcos. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And there was also the infrastructure planning of the Department of Public Works, Transportation and Communications, and Planning and Project Development Office. And that's where we were part of Metroplan, interagency. Okay. Working on infrastructure to coordinate. Because what's happening without those? Uh, there's a tendency for different departments of government to act like vertical elevators without the floors. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, with a more integration. Oh, who absor uh, the, the one that uh, for, for, the, for the metro plan, who absorbed those functions now? Yeah, MMDA, the 17 LGUs. Oh, I 17 see. LGUs, but we, we plan for 40 LGUs. I see. Mm. So it, it's uh, another thing is uh, we should now update our models. We're still using mm -hmm. the uh, loss of the Indies of the Spanish times, intramuros <laughs> for the rich, extramuros for the poor. That's more than 500 years. We're still using that. And then the, the car-oriented planning of Los Angeles after the war. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles started reforming mm -hmm. it after the OPEC oil crisis of 1973. Mm -hmm. So they were they reactive, be, uh, or no, uh, responsive, proactive, 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 yes. I go back to school every time there's a global crisis. Mm -hmm. Like after 9-11, I've, I've gone back to Harvard Graduate School of Design okay. to unlearn the mistakes and learn new, new best practices. Mm -hmm. Yes, three weeks ago, I went back to school again in Harvard. Okay. Not just for a class reunion, but got enrolled again to take some special uh, courses. What? Can you at least cite, you know, what's yeah. your new learning? Like, learning uh, this I one? studied it uh, after 9-11, the security by design. Okay. Master planning and sustainability, architecture and sustainability, mm -mm. the best practices in real estate development, the art of design leadership, mm -hmm. all of those. Wow. Yeah. And uh, lessons learned from mistakes made. Mm -hmm. and lessons learned from best practices all over the world. Mm -hmm. So, do you think, sir, that uh, with our system now and with the political uh, will uh, you know, that's being uh, showcased by the Duterte administration, is there hope for uh, urban planning to succeed here There's in the Philippines? Hope because like, we won the competition and bids for Metro Davao, mm -hmm. Pampanga, Clark, Puerto Princesa, Sambuanga, Siargao, mm -hmm. and many others. Mm -hmm. Zero corruption. Wow. Unlike in the past. 
we're in how, how, you know if the, there's zero corruption uh, this ad, in this administration no at least the projects that we were involved in okay we won without some anybody asking for a commission wow interesting yeah that's something positive about it maybe because people are now scared of the president's campaign against corruption mm -hmm. and that's a positive because in the past we would lose because we don't compromise yes i see mm. But okay, sir. So with that positive uh, uh, insight that it is possible with zero corruption, you think this the projects that we were involved? Yes, in, so there's still corruption now, but at least <laughs> the projects we were involved in, there was no corruption. Okay, and then how how true is the client, let's say the LGUs, uh, following the urban master plan? Yeah, at least. For Metro Davao and Pampanga, even Ilocos, we did some uh, uh, Metro Ilocos tourism plan. They seem to have strong leadership okay. uh, now. And hopefully, it will be continued by future leaders. That's why, more than the blueprints of the plan, we mm -hmm. should create now a planning system. Okay. An urban planning system that can cross generations. Mm -hmm. Like after the big earthquake in Kathmandu, Nepal, mm -hmm. we're hired by Chuchi the Buddhist organization and with 96 with with funders from 96 Buddhi, <coughs> Buddhists from 96 countries mm -hmm. to design a university a hospital and three schools mm -hmm. to last 40 generations wow well one, that's one, that one, is 1000 years that is sustainability 1, 000, yeah <laughs> here in our country when i talk 100 years 100 years only four generations people are skeptical yeah. foreigners yeah. hire us right. to design facilities to last 40 generations oh. 1000 years and there's so much brain power in this country. Mm -hmm. But some, some of our Filipino expats, when they come home, they are not very well appreciated. Mm -hmm. So what we do now, instead of, of uh, we should have more brain gain rather than <laughs> brain gain. Filipinos abroad, they've been so, so well respected in their jobs. Mm -hmm. Let's not call them OFW. Okay. We were called Filipino expats. Yes. Uh, OFW sounds like prisoner of war. <laughs> yes. We don't call the Americans here American OFW, Australian OFW, Japanese OFW. We should give them respect, mm -hmm. Filipino expats. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, sir, with your mm -hmm. uh, exposure with urban planning, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, you just, you know, you even traveled to Harvard recently to, you know, get new learnings. Is there a way? for the country to somehow institutionalize it? Is there like, for example, other schools or other countries would have special schools for urban planning? Uh, some would have, uh, you know, uh, programs yeah. for uh, government officials in the private sector. Is this institutionalized? Even the schools offering environmental planning, they should upgrade and update. Mm -hmm. That's why I told you, at age 68, I still go back to school in mm -hmm. Harvard. And mm -hmm. Also, I have membership in internal, international organizations at American Institute of Architects, American Planning Association. I'm a fellow of the Council for Tall Buildings mm -hmm. and a country leader. I have about maybe a dozen international organizations of which I actively participate. Mm -hmm. I learn and share. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's how I get up to date. And mm -hmm. I hope other professionals will do the same. Mm -hmm. And if you see something wrong, you must speak out. Because if you don't speak out, you don't report, just like a sin of omission, mm -hmm. not just a sin of commission. That's why there's so much corruption here. Mm -hmm. Only one percent are corrupt, but the 98.99% <laughs> are cowards of so don't cave anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, sir, uh, I think we're, we're almost nearing um, the, the um, time limit. Uh, if there is one urban place that you want to redevelop, what would this be? And how would you do it? Metro Manila, Metro Cebu, Metro Davao, mm -hmm. and the emerging metropolitan areas. We should do some uh, urban renewal mm -hmm. and planning for new areas. Mm -hmm. And then the next 100 new cities, we should make them walkable, bikeable, livable, safer, more convenient, uh, integrating places to live, work, shop, and dine, learn, and worship with healthcare and wellness center with some 24-hour cycle activity centers. Mm -hmm. They must be integrated. They must be cross-generational and, uh, and mixed income mm -hmm. and multi-use and mixed use. Mm -hmm. And this is what we've been preaching. Mm -hmm. And we do it in all our projects, whether we're followed or not, 
it's like a crusade already because mm -hmm. architecture is art and science so yes. it's urban planning but it's also a, a passion and advocacy mm -hmm. because we keep we have to keep pitching the benefits of having a good urban plan and good architecture mm -hmm. and somebody described architecture as good citizen architecture because when we design buildings we look at the surroundings mm -hmm. what's the positive impact of the building we design yes. and the neighborhood and the community in the city it's not uglifying the city <laughs> correct it beautifies the uh, surroundings yeah. and give a great creating values as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. architect we've been addressing the both the government and i think the private sector uh, since we started the conversation but this time sir what is your message to the filipino worker and the filipino family who are uh, commuters and a lot of them are uh, in metro manila and the whole country yeah Filipino workers and employees, we should try to work closer to our place, to live closer to our places of work, and maybe influence government to put more affordable housing mm -hmm. where there are a concentration of jobs. Mm -hmm. And we should all be very vigilant, keep our safety safer. Mm -hmm. And like I had proposed elevated walkways the whole length of EDSA, and pedestrian bridges and bicycle bridges across Pasig River across San Juan River, across Marikina River, and all the waterways. Encourage people to walk, stay healthy. And for the Filipino workers and employees, we should try to influence decision makers. Mm -hmm. Let's say your salary is so much, how much of this goes to traffic? <laughs> like employees of Makati are traffic burdened and rental burdened. Yes. Because housing is so expensive. So Correct. they are rental burdened and uh -huh. they are traffic burdened. Mm -hmm. I think the same with the employees of Fort Bonifacio, employees of Ortega Center. Mm -hmm. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. They cannot afford housing. They have to commute from very far places. And then in communities and cities and towns that have less jobs, I think we should more put more office parks, business parks, so that integrate more the place to live and place to work. Mm -hmm. And for, for the Philippines, maybe even schools, instead of increasing classrooms, they should put more dormitories. <laughs> and put <laughs> new classrooms in the provinces. So the quality of education, whether you study in the provinces or in Metro Manila, is the same quality. Mm -hmm. Unlike now, if you study in the provinces, you're like a second class. Yeah, substandard. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we should distribute even education, job opportunities to the provinces. And our country is so blessed. We're number one in the world in marine biodiversity. Mm -hmm. We're now number one in the world in seafarers, mm -hmm. sailors. We're now number one in the world in call centers. Mm -hmm. I'd like to believe we are number one in nurses and doctors mm -hmm. and musicians. Mm -hmm. We're number two in the world in geothermal energy. Wow. We're num number two in the world in, in BPOs. Mm -hmm. We have the third longest coastline in the world. In Dubai, they did not have enough coastline, so they did the Palm Islands just to add 2,000 <laughs> kilometers more of water. So it's man-made, yes. Some Ours is natural. Yeah, some mm -hmm. countries, they go to war because they don't have waterfront, like Iraq inviting Kuwait. Uh -huh. We're number four in the world in gold mm -hmm. resource. We're number four in the world in shipbuilding. We're number five in all other mineral resources. We're number 12 in human resources. So without corruption, if we have just corruption, criminality, climate change, we should be in the top 20 economies of the world. Wow. And how far do you think are we from being number 20? Uh, I think as long as we have a, a strong political will, visionary leadership, good appreciation of urban planning, good appreciation of good design like architecture engineering, and good governance. And our leaders must not be intellectually challenged, and they, mu they must not be integrity challenged. Okay. Okay, on that note, uh, we'd like to thank Architect Palafox, and as you have heard, uh, the Filipino workforce deserve a better quality of urban life with better urban planning and regional uh, development. We thank Architect Palafox for his straightforward analysis and insights and ideas. Thank you very much, Architect. We hope to see you again here on the show. Yeah, thank you, sir, and thank okay. you for the listeners and viewers for uh, the opportunity to share. Okay. Open for Business Will Return. Stay tuned for our term of the week and our inspiring words. Open for Business is here. We'll be back.
In our term of the week, you take a refresher of business to make you updated, more informed, and ready to make smarter business decisions. Our term of the week is LEAD. That's uh, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. It is a certification program and the nationally accepted benchmark for the design, construction, and operation of high-performance green buildings. We end our webisode with the quote of the day. Today's words are from Rebecca Solnit, an American author who often writes on the environment, politics, place, and art. She said, In great cities, spaces as well as places are designed and built. Walking, witnessing, being, being in public are as much part of the design and purpose as being inside to eat, sleep, make shoes, or love, or music. The word citizen has to do with cities, and the ideal city is organized around citizenship, around participation in public life. Join us again next Saturday, 5 p.m. Philippine time, for another episode of Open for Business, where we discuss business information, deliver the latest business news to keep you informed and open for business and be ahead of the curve from vision to action. You're on Facebook Live on Eagle News and also watch us on eaglenewslive.com. This is Cesar Vallejos. Have a great day.